Did you know that there are over 300 shapes of pasta? Today, I'll show you how to identify, cook, and correctly use the many types of pasta that you're likely to encounter. This is the big guide to pasta. All pasta can be broken into three main categories based on its shape. Long, pastina, and short. Long is exactly what it sounds like, long pasta noodles. Pastina are small grain-sized pasta noodles, and short is pretty much everything else in between. The dough and the shapes vary by region, tradition, size, shape, fresh, dried, but in the end, it's all pasta. Spaghetti. Spaghetti is a long pasta. It's thicker than angel hair, but thinner than bucatini. It's like a long string, hence the name spaghetti, because spago means string. Here we have a traditional spaghetti aglio e olio. This is a very simple and very traditional dish. Mm. The beauty of this dish is in the simplicity of the ingredients and the bite from the thickness of the spaghetti gives it the texture that you want. Spaghetti is one of the most commonly purchased pastas in the US. One thing though that you will never see in Italy is spaghetti and meatballs. That is a true American dish that doesn't really have any roots in Italy. Fettuccine. Fettuccine is a long, flat pasta, kind of shaped like a ribbon. Sometimes it is also sold curled up in nests. Fresh fettuccine pretty much always has eggs in the dough, but sometimes the dry does as well. You can tell because it'll have a slightly more yellow hue to the noodle. Here we have fettuccine alfredo, a more modern Italian dish. This sauce is made in the pan along with the noodles, emulsifying cheese, butter, and a little bit of the starchy pasta water. The thickness of the noodles stands up perfectly to the sauce. It gives you bite and texture that really complements it. Mm. Butter, cheese, and pasta, you can't go wrong. Angel hair. Also called Capelli D'Angelo. As you can see, angel hair is a very thin pasta noodle, even thinner than capellini or spaghetti, so it's best to be paired with very fine sauces and things that don't have a lot of large chunks in them. When cooked, the angel hair expands very, very slightly like all pasta does, but it is still incredibly fine. The shape and size of the angel hair is great with pesto pasta because the pesto and the oil in it coat the noodles evenly and beautifully. A basic ratio for cooking pasta is one pound of pasta to one gallon of water with two or three tablespoons of salt added. The water should always be well seasoned and rapidly boiling before you add your noodles. But no matter the amount you're cooking, just make sure that your pasta is not crowded in the pot and has room for the water to circulate and cook it evenly. Lasagna. Lasagna can come in a lot of different forms. Here we have the dry flat, the dry with the rippled edges, and fresh. These are all lasagna, but technically lasagna is a sfoglia, which means thin sheet in Italian because you have a thin sheet of pasta. These noodles are usually boiled first in salted water, layered with sauce, and then baked in the oven. Here we have a spinach and mushroom lasagna. The noodles are wide and hearty, so they do just as well with a rich vegetable filling like this. Mm. Lasagna is a great comfort food dish, and it's also a great dish to make large format. You can feed a lot of people from one pan. Bucatini. Bucatini is a long pasta with a small hole running through the center of the noodle. It's also sometimes called perciatelli. The name comes from the Italian word buco, meaning whole, or perciato, meaning pierced. It's a thicker pasta noodle, so it definitely has some bite and texture to it. And this hole in it kind of makes it resemble a drinking straw. From a distance, it kind of resembles spaghetti, but the eating experience of bucatini is completely different because it's thicker and with the hole running through the center, you actually get some of that sauce on the inside of the noodle. Here we have cacio e pepe, which is a classic preparation using only cheese and pepper. You get a little bit of bite and heat from the pepper and it's so simple, but the chew from the noodle really enhances 
the saltiness and the pepperiness of the sauce. Mafaldine. Mafaldine is a long, flat noodle, similar to a skinnier lasagna pasta with the rippled edges. You can find it dried flat like this or curled up in nests, which are less likely to break. And at 10 inches, it's one of the longest noodles that you'll find commercially available, which is nothing to shake a stick at. <laughs> like all pasta, the color gets lighter and it gets a little engorged from taking on the water during cooking. But you see here that it keeps its shape and these ridges will hold all kind of delicious sauce. It's like a very long ribbon which makes it great for plating because you only need a few noodles per person. Mafaldine would pair really well with something that will coat the length of the noodle with some chunks in it, like seafood or eggplant. So it would go really well with a pasta a la norma. Tagliatelle. Tagliatelle is a long pasta noodle that's similar to fettuccine. The name of this pasta comes from the Italian word tagliere, which means to cut, and it resembles long cut ribbons. Here we have fresh and dried versions in front of us. Tagliatelle comes from Emilia Romana, which is a region in the north of Italy. So it's more common to see this pasta sold fresh and including eggs in the dough. The flatness of the noodles is similar to fettuccine, but they are thinner. So you're still gonna get texture and bite, but not as much as you would from the fettuccine. Here we have a tagliatelle with bolognese, which is a classic way of serving tagliatelle. Bolognese is typically a meat sauce, or you can substitute meat for mushrooms like we have here. Another great preparation for tagliatelle is pasta carbonara. The small pieces of the guanciale cling to the noodles along with the creamy sauce, but don't overpower it. Because the components of bolognese are usually quite small, everything clings and coats the noodles beautifully. So you get a little bit of everything in one bite. Mm -hmm. Pappardelle. Pappardelle is a long, flat, ribbon-shaped pasta. It's wider than tagliatelle, but not nearly as wide as lasagna. So you can see that the cooked pasta expands a little bit and becomes more translucent. Pappardelle is typically made with eggs, so you'll see that it gives it that elasticity that you get from the egg whites. Because of the width of these noodles, they stand up really well to a hearty sauce like a wild boar ragu or a heavier creamy sauce. Accini di pepe. Accine di pepe is a type of pastina. Pastina is a general term for any small grain-sized pasta. Pastina can come in different types of shapes, like stars or circles, but accine di pepe is kind of like little balls or grains. And you can see how small it is. It looks like small stones or seeds. It's great for comfort foods, like cold salads, put in soups or broths, or also prepared like risotto. It's also a symbol of fertility, which is why it's traditionally used in Italian wedding soup. Here we have the accine di pepe prepared in a dish called pastina. It's a little confusing because pastina is the category of small pastas, but it's also the name of this dish. To make it, you cook the pasta in a light chicken stock or water, and then add butter and milk, and then finish it with some pecorino or Parmesan. It's creamy, it's comforting. Mm. I'm gonna be happy dancing all day, but it's pretty much butter and cheese, so how can you go wrong? Orzo. Orzo is a short pasta, sometimes lumped in with pastina. The word orzo translates to barley, which makes sense because it looks a lot like a barley grain. The accine de pepe was much smaller and finer. The individual grains have this thicker center, thinner points at the ends, so you know that it's gonna give you a nice textural difference when you're using it. Because of the size and shape, you can see that it's great to use in salads, similar preparations to a grain salad, but pasta. Orzo is also great in soups. You cook it separately and add it in or cook it last minute in the broth. Two classic preparations are minestrone soup and avgo limono. Avgo limono is a Greek soup. It's like a chicken soup with lemon that's also thickened with a little bit of egg. Gomiti. The word gomito in Italian means elbow. Gomiti is a short, hollow, 
half moon shaped pasta. It resembles a large elbow macaroni and sometimes has ridges on the outside, which helps the sauce cling to it. This would be great for a chunky pasta salad, something with peas or ham or anything that can get inside of there. Also creamy cheese sauces, and you would get a lot of that deliciousness in every single bite. Anything that you could really get that flavor and that sauce on the inside. So don't be afraid to use larger garnish with something like this. You could also use the dry ones for macaroni art, which is my nephew's favorite medium, gnocchi. Gnocchi is a short pasta that is sort of shaped like a shell and you can find it fresh or dried. I know what you're thinking. Most people are familiar with gnocchi as the small dumpling that's made with potato. These gnocchi are technically gnocchetti, also called mayoredos. They're smaller, they're dry, and they contain no potato. The word gnocchi comes from gnocca, which means knuckle. On the back of the gnocchetti, you can see where it's dragged with a knife over the board to get the ridges on this side, but where the knife pulls the dough, it makes little tears, which give it great texture for more sauce to cling to. Because it is a little thick, it has great bite, and you can feel with your tongue, not just the ribs on the front, but also the torn texture on the back. So it's not just like eating a flat noodle. The bite and the chew, along with the texture of this pasta, can really stand up well to a hearty sauce like a ragu or bolognese. It could also go with something a little finer like a pesto because it would get into all of those grooves, delivering more flavor per bite. If you don't have mayoredos and you're working with the potato gnocchi, which is more of a dumpling, a simple sauce is great. Something that doesn't overpower and really lets the pasta come through. Something like a pomodoro that would really highlight the gnocchi. Ravioli. Ravioli is a short stuffed pasta that can have a variety of fillings. These ravioli are rectangular shaped, but they can be round, square, shaped like dumplings and folded. There are so many different types of filled pastas. These ravioli are stuffed with ricotta cheese, but there is no end to the type of filling that you can have. It's typically made with an egg dough, and that's because the yolks are gonna give it a little fat to make the dough very smooth, while the whites are gonna give it elasticity and structure so that the dough doesn't break when it goes over the filling. Here we have ravioli with brown butter and sage. Because raviolis are so focused on all the flavor from the stuffing, they're typically paired with simple sauces or just a little oil, garlic, and herbs. That is so lovely. You get all that beautiful filling, which is really just complemented by the nuttiness and sweetness from the brown butter. And then you get that beautiful flavor from the sage. Another great option for ricotta ravioli is a light tomato like pomodoro sauce to give it a little bit of acidity to cut through the richness. Fusilli. Fusilli is a spiral or corkscrew shaped pasta. Because of these twists, it's got all these grooves that really hold on to sauce. It also resembles rotini, which is another spiral shaped pasta. Because of differences in production, fusilli can look like the traditional pasta wrapped around a rod or it can look like a tighter spiral, which is pressed through an extruder like you see here. This would pair well with a creamy sauce that's a little bit heavy or a slightly chunky tomato sauce or pretty much anything that has some pieces in it that can get into these grooves where the noodle can really hold on to it and deliver in every bite. Farfalle. Farfalle means butterflies in Italian, but it is also commonly referred to as bow tie pasta, cause it's fancy. But it's not just style over substance. The grooves in this pasta actually hold on to a lot of sauce and garnish. As you can see, farfalle makes a great pasta salad, especially with items that are about the same size and a vinaigrette that can really get into all those nooks and crannies of the noodle. Mm -hmm. The texture of the noodle stands up to some of the acid in the vinaigrette, especially because you have that center, which is a little thicker and has a little bit of bite to it, while the edges are a little softer. Farfalle also pairs well 
with a crushed sun-dried tomato pesto, anything where you can get those peaks of flavor to get inside those crevices of the pasta. Cavatappi. Cavatappi is a short S-shaped pasta that looks like a corkscrew. Cavatappi was actually invented by mistake when a company put the wrong dye on their extruder. So instead of the elbow macaroni, the macaroni was twisted and they got cavatappi. Cavatappi is used in a lot of the same dishes that elbow macaroni is used because it has a similar shape with the tube, but it can hold a lot more sauce. So here we have a version of mac and cheese using cavatappi topped with a little bit of crushed hot Cheetos. Mm, mm, mm. This is the perfect noodle because it really holds a lot of that sauce. I get sauce on the outside in all of those curls as well as the inside. So you get a little gush of cheese when you bite down on it. It's super comforting, but also very modern. And just like cavatappi itself, it's a contemporary noodle. Orequete. It's shaped like a small ear. The orequete is made by taking a small cube of pasta dough, rolling it across a pasta board with a knife to flatten it out, and then you take that little piece and pop it over your finger to make the dimple. Here we have orequete with broccoli rabe, Italian sausage, and garlic. And I love orequete because the little dimples just hold so much sauce and flavor, so you get everything in a bite, even if you're just getting the pasta. Mm. You can see here how even this naked little noodle has sauce, it has the oil, it has some of the flavor from every component inside of that dimple. So even if you're getting a scoop of just pasta, you're gonna get tons of flavor clinging to the noodle. Mm-hmm. Bakery. Bakery is a short tubular pasta that is shaped like a ring. The name comes from pakaria, which means slaps, which some people say is a reference to the sound the cooked noodles make when it hits the plate or the smacking that you do when you eat the delicious pasta. It slaps. Many Italians use bakari in a lasagna style dish. They fill the bakari with ricotta cheese, layer it in a baking dish with tomato sauce and Parmesan, and then bake it in the oven. As you can see, the pakari gets even bigger when it cooks and you can really get inside. So this pasta is great for really hearty sauces because of the thickness and the open centers. Sauces that are great for pakari include something really hearty like a meat ragu or stuffed with mushrooms and sausage and then baked. Penne. Penne is a short pasta that is cut to have angled edges. As you see here, this penne has ridges on the outside. It can also come smooth, but any pasta that has ridges along the outer area will make the sauce cling better, so you'll get a little bit more coating the noodle. Who doesn't like more sauce? A couple of preparations that are great for penne are arrabbiata or penne alla vodka. These are sauces that will really work their way into the middle of the hollow noodle, so you get tons of sauce in every single bite. Rigatoni. Rigatoni are short, wide tubes of pasta that are always ridged on the outside, but smooth on the inside. It comes from the word rigato, which means ridged. Here we have rigatoni alla grisha. Alla grisha is a classic Roman sauce that's made in the pan using guanciale, black pepper, pecorino, and pasta water. Mm. The rigatoni is great to make in the style of alla grisha because it really stands up to the flavors of the guanciale, the black pepper, and the pecorino, which are all very assertive. When the sauce comes together, it gets caught in those beautiful ridges, so you get tons of flavor, even though it looks very simple. Gonquilia. Conchilie, or shells, is a type of pasta that's shaped like a conch shell, hence the name. These are conchilioni, or jumbo shells. The small shells are great in soups and brothy dishes. The medium are amazing for mac and cheese, kind of like Velveeta. And the large shells are really good when they're stuffed and then baked in the oven. Here we have shells stuffed with ricotta and spinach. Mm-hmm. Jumbo shells can be stuffed with any mixture of meat, cheese, 
and or vegetables and typically placed in a baking dish with tomato sauce on the bottom and a little bit on top to keep the noodles from getting too dry. This can be a very hearty and filling dish. You can serve one or two pieces as an appetizer, three or four, that's a meal. So that was pasta. I hope you learned a lot and get to try some of these delicious preparations that we talked about today. With all of this new knowledge, nothing is impossible. Leave a comment and let us know what you wanna see next time on The Big Guide. I'm Adrienne Cheatham, and I hope to see you soon.